And next we have Mike. My early explorations into AI consisted of making weird art, models like StyleGAN, Deep Dream, Style Transfer. But now, several years later into the evolution of AI, I found myself using AI out of convenience, practicality from my coding, design, and writing work. The tasks for which I've enlisted AI include making logos and icons, the stable diffusion, writing web copy with open AI, performing voice authentication with Microsoft Cognitive Speech, and writing code with GitHub Copilot. This presentation, as you likely by now have noticed, is not actually a video of me, but a deep fake using voice generated from the scripts of Overdub and video using the software DeepFace. Uh, so machine learning has gone from niche use cases to being something that people will use almost unwittingly to make work faster and easier. Alongside creative AI, I have a keen interest in sustainability. And as far as matches go, AI and the environment might seem to be a pair of star-crossed lovers. Training an AI model, for example, can be extremely energy intensive. GPT-3, the model on which many of these services are listed above were based, required an estimated 85,000 kilograms of CO2. It would take 100 acres of forest an entire year to sequester that much carbon. So the carbon footprint of AI since 2010 has been exponential with computation costs doubling every few months and is expected to grow at a rate of 44% per year through 2025. Someone asked a good question in the environment Slack channel about how much energy is expended, not in training models, but using them in services like stable diffusion. So I did some digging and I found a Python library called Code Carbon which can perform an estimation of your code's real-time carbon costs. Running Code Carbon, I performed tests on stable diffusion to generate images, and the output after about five minutes was a third of a gram of carbon. In other words, I could use stable diffusion for about three hours, and it would be the same as charging my phone for an hour. So running FaceSwap, the software I used to generate that deep fake, calculated a per hour usage of about 500 grams of carbon. So that's equivalent to charging about 64 smartphones. Uh, I reached out to Sasha Lucioni, a research uh, scientist of ethical AI and author of Code Carbon. And she said that unlike model training, machine learning inference is tough to estimate. It depends on the size of your GPU, how many requests it's receiving and how efficiently you optimize your software. But the biggest factor might be where your GPU is getting its energy. So I used another tool and learned that training a model for a hundred hours in Google Cloud's Asia South region would consume 46 times more carbon than a GPU in the Europe West region. That can primarily be attributed to the fact that Europe West is using renewable sources of energy and Asia South is using fossil fuel. However, it's important not to forget the carbon reducing potential of AI such as traffic and energy forecasting, reducing system waste, environmental monitoring, lots of other things. Sam Altman of OpenAI predicts the future might be one in which we're leveraging primarily pre-trained models versus training these models from scratch, which is much more energy intensive. At the Google Cloud Next event this week, one of their top predictions for 2025 was that three out of four developers would lead with sustainability as their primary development principle. On the Future Products team, we're thinking about ways to leverage AI responsibly, including minimizing the environmental impact of the things that we create. One particular open source contribution I'd personally love to work on with other Mozillians is a JavaScript library that makes interfacing with code carbon a little bit easier. But I'm curious what else we could be building. How can we make sure we're building sustainably? Uh, if you have knowledge and ideas about the intersection of AI, open source, and sustainability, uh, please get in touch. Thanks. Thank you, Mike. That was interesting. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, and next up, we have Becca. Uh, 